Okay, um, so what we're going to go over today, um, let's talk about these powerful sessions over here. Do um, you guys know about like some of these shortcuts? Like if you hit Command T, it does like this like fuzzy search. <laughs> what? No idea. Never seen this at all. Happens to be a fruit beyond. What is a fuzzy search? No, it's that has not. No, it's not. We have no idea. No, seriously? Yeah, see, I, I can't, I don't, I don't know you guys yet, you know? <laughs> yeah, I thought you were being sarcastic. No? Okay, all right, cool, check it out. I like how this absolute confusion started the lecture. So uh, basically what like fuzzy search is, it means that you can search uh, and you don't have to like completely nail it. So if you ever do like your, your search, who's like, like implemented some sort of search, and then all of a sudden like you have one capital, and then like it throws your whole search off. It doesn't work. Um, so fuzzy search is actually really good in the way that like, for example, like we have inside our app folder, right? We have controllers and then we have like uh, this nachos controller. So if I already know what the file name is, I can just go nachos, whoops, like nacho and then it'll like kind of find everything with nacho and then I can put like controller and then like even with the space, it'll find like the underscore and it even like remove the S so it kind of finds it pretty well. If you know that it's somewhere in the views, you can kind of like even search like if you know the file tree, like uh, I got like app views and then I don't know index, they'll find it. And so it's fuzzy because like you don't have to be perfect with it, and so it's just it's powerful. It is command T, and so when you're going through like all your files, you're like oh my god, I know it's one of the forms, and then you're like cool, I don't have any forms on here, but. You know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, cool, it's one of the show pages. Got you, fam. And then it's like a show for nachos. Or like nacho show. <laughs> Powerful. There it is. And so it's like, it'll get you there. You know, it's close enough. Plus, plus? All right. Noise. All right. So let's check out this feature. Let's kind of talk a little bit about, let's talk about this. Go into the readme. If you have like a README file, this is what the file actually looks like in Markdown. If you actually want to see what it looks like when it's deployed and it's like rendered, you can take a look at what the preview is by hitting Control Shift M. It'll show you what it's supposed to look like. I know. Wow. And then if you don't like the like, let's just say you have like all of the code files that you want open and you no longer need the file tree, you hit Command Slash, which is the key right above Return on like US keyboards. Now just get rid of it. And so you get that much more space for coding. Okay, I guess that one wasn't as impressive. And that's okay. Uh, how do you get it back? Command slash. Bloop. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Command slash. It's the one right above the return key. Command shift M will bring this markdown preview. So when you guys are looking and doing like your code challenges or you like pull up a repo for your labs and you don't like looking at the labs this way and you actually want to see it, what it looks like in the browser, but you never want to leave Atom, you're like tired of alt tabbing back to the browser to like look at the readme as it's designed to be seen, then you can just preview it. I feel like I'm never going to get to cookies and this, huh? <laughs> It previews, uh, you have to like actually be in the markdown file. Yeah, it'll preview whatever's selected. Good question. Any other like random shortcut questions? You can. All right, so let's just get to cookies and sessions. Um, we can we can talk about shortcuts at a different time. Blue, blue, blue. All right, so check it out, right? Cool. So the first thing, um, I'm not sure like how involved that we are in terms of like understanding the web requests and Rails. So I just kind of want to bring us all onto the same page, right? So there's something, um, there's a statement here that says HTTP is a stateless protocol. What does that mean? If anyone has any idea. It's okay if you don't, but it's better if you do. I think it means that it doesn't save the request once they're um, created. 
run the next Yeah, absolutely, right? So what he said was that like from one request to another, they don't know about each other. So here's an example, right? Check it out. Let's head to this fuzzy search. All right, let's head to the nachos controller. I have index here. Oh, let me get rid of this. I have index here. I'll just get rid of it entirely. Bloop, bloop. I have index here, and that is just nachos at all. And then I have show. And show, there's this before action. You've seen before action yet? That's no eat. I'm trying to be cool and hip with the with the kids. I don't know. You eat? Yes. All right. So what's going to do is uh, this before action is going to call find nacho, and find nacho is simply just going to run this like params find by ID. Cool. So if I go to index, I will have all of my nachos, right? So let's do that. Boom. I'm at slash nachos, which is the restful index route. And here I can see a list of all my nachos. All right, I have trash can nachos, mac and cheese nachos, deep fried nachos, danger dogs, things just got out of control, right? We like manually see this database. And so if I were to click one of them, what would happen? What page should I see? The show page, right? So if I go to the show page and I in fact see the details for this one nacho, how is this one nacho detail coming through? Well. If we look at the show, it's doing at nacho, and it's finding by the params. So when I make a request to index, it sends me all the nachos. When I make a request to show, it sends me the detail of one particular nacho. That is the current state of my website. That means that when I'm on index, the current state of the website is that I have all of the nachos. If I'm looking at a show page, I am currently seeing the state of this website right now is just one nacho. Does that mean that the server doesn't have access to all of them? Does my database sort of go away when I'm looking at this one nacho? No. But they're stateless in the sense that can I pull or see all of the nachos while I'm currently looking at the show page for nacho number two? No. So from request to request, Right? They don't know about each other. When I'm on the index page, it knows nothing about the show page. And so we can even prove that because let's say I'm in my show page. What instance variable do I have access to? Only at, at nacho. Right? If I were to go to my, my show page, remember I only have access to at nacho. If I were to do something like this, bloop, drop some Ruby in there and do at nachos, which is defined in the index and not in the show, what will happen? It will break, right? Because one Ruby scoping, right? If I define a method and if I define a variable inside a method, it doesn't know about the variable inside other methods. So if I define a little bit. Huh? I might want to zoom in? Yeah. Just let me know. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Alright, so what I'm saying is if I define a, a variable here and I define a variable here, they won't know about each other because of Ruby scoping. And so in terms of like these requests, they don't know about each other. They don't have access to the variables from other requests. Right? I make a request to index. I do a get to slash nachos. I query the database. All right? So here I'm doing boop, boop, boop. Oops, sorry. It's JavaScript. Um, I will do a request. Right, for information from the database, and then I will send back a response. Now we'll render the index. Cool. And then when I do a get to slash nacho slash one, all right, I'm making another request. All right. So I'm going to query the database. So what do I need from the model? And that's coming from this before action in the find nacho. And then ultimately, what do I send back as a response? This response and this response don't know anything about each other. Right? Computers are really forgetful. I'm like, I'm going to call the server. I'm like, yo, let me get that index page. Cool. And it gives me the index page. I'm looking at it, and then I call the server again. I'm like, yo, let me see that show page. It's going to be like, I'm sorry, who are you? OK, you want the show page? Great, no problem. It's like, I don't know who you are. I just serve back the response. Are there any questions on this like stateless protocol? 
And if you pull a class, uh, the whole class, or are you going to use limited consent to get to it? Can I call the whole class inside uh, the view? The view is just so that you add Straight down. nacho? Like this? Yeah, down all from there. While what you're saying is technically correct, we should not be doing that. Okay. Um, the view should not be interacting with the model directly. Yeah. Every single one of you should listen because I've seen so many of you doing that. Don't do this. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's let's talk about that like super fast, right? Let's drop this like ERB template. Make it. So why does this not highlight here, but highlight here? What the? That was embarrassing. <laughs> Wow, powerful suggestions. Zach, I stand corrected. This class is very responsive. Um, it doesn't highlight because it, this here thinks it's HTML, and this, it looked like a Ruby, right? So you have to like wrap it inside this like Ruby templating, and then that way it'll like evaluate. So technically, you should have access to it, but this right here is an ERB file, and therefore it's a view, and it breaks this like MVC architecture. You shouldn't have your views directly interacting with the model. It should be going through the controller. So quick a side note, if we do like f.collection select, I can't believe I'm going to do this from memory. You have like the object, right? But the object is implied because you have the f block. The next thing is going to be what? Sure, like whatever the belongs to is whatever, right? So like, like yeah, sort of like cheese, ID, facts, and then you have the collection you want to iterate through. So some of you will be putting in like nacho.all, and that's crazy, because uh, why would I be having the model interact with the view? In the show page, if I needed all the nachos, I can go right here in the show page and go, yo, check it out, fam. And now inside the show page, do I have access to add nachos. And that that would just be the refactor. I feel like like a no change collapse where it just says like I've I've literally like done this exact syntax and it like does not know it like cannot use this map on the middle class or whatever. Um, I think you're I think you're querying it incorrectly. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll touch base offline because that, that bug seems super specific. Oh, old girl here wants to help you out. Um, cool. Interesting. Oh, I'm not. I'm not mouth the gate because uh, I don't understand that. Um, but thank you for the explanation. Um, interesting. Okay. So yes, historically, um, Rails will do like auto magic, and it will run this render function based specifically on what the method name is. All right. So if I had another controller action, def your boy. What would this implicitly render? Yeah, it would render your boy. It would be looking for inside the views, under the nachos, a your boy dot erb. Here, I'm specifically writing render. Um, one because I want you to start getting into the habit of writing the word render. Because as I take you into mod three, oh hey, what's up? I'm your mod three instructor. Hello. <laughs> Um, cool, we will actually be explicitly writing the word render, and so I just want you to get into the habit of understanding that there's some sort of request, it needs to interact with the model for some data, and then it will send back a response. So I write render because I just want you to get into the habit of explicitly writing it, but you are all in fact correct that Rails will implicitly render. Cool? Yes? No? If you build a full stack Rails app, Tashaun is leading you down the correct path. And that is, if I use a Rails front end, like view files, ERB files, then you should be relying on the fact that Rails will be rendering implicitly um, the same method name. However, um, 
as we use Rails just purely as a backend and we use Rails just to build out our API, then we will be sending back something not just HTML, but potentially some other type of data. So I just want you to get into the habit of writing render. Noise. These are good questions. And that was the end of them. All right, great. So, cool. Any questions on HTTP as a stateless protocol? So the question is, right, like, um, cool, I'm not going to zoom into this at all, but how do we then track information from request to request, right? Think about it. Like, you're trying to log inside your app, right? Maybe you're trying to build some sort of shopping cart, and when you, like, put add to cart, and you click this button, and it adds, like, these, like, fancy sneakers to your shopping cart, all of a sudden, when you go back to the page, the, the shoes are there, and it knew something about your previous request. You can go click on another pair of sneakers, and now you have two pairs of sneakers in your shopping cart. So from request to request, there's a way to track this data, but HTTP requests inherently are not stateful. Does that make sense? Is that fair? Yes? Okay. North, south, up, down, left, right. Check or hold. I might want a lot of weird references. Now, right, just going to move on casually. <laughs> Cool. All right, so let's actually build out some features, right? Now that we talked a little bit about this. Um, actually, let's do this. Let's talk about cookies before I get into like this feature. Look at this. Cool. So if we go into, have you seen the Chrome DevTools yet? All right, so in case you haven't, what you can do is you can right click anywhere on the page. If you want, Chrome is like really smart. Like there's this like menu, it's probably like an H1 somewhere on my page. If I right click and inspect it, Chrome will do its best to actually find it somewhere in the page. I can close this out, and then if I try clicking this button, right click, and I hit inspect, it will actually try to find in the HTML where it is. So it didn't actually highlight the H1, it highlighted where that button is. And so it kind of like show you what the HTML is when you click it. But what we're gonna talk about today is more about um, the cookies. So if you go into application, you can see there's like some sort of local storage, some sort of session storage, and there's something called cookies in here. Inside cookies, you'll see the domain, localhost 3000. If I click it, you will start to see, look at this, trash app. That's what I named it. I'm very cynical, <laughs> right? And so basically, what a cookie is, is just a bunch of key value pairs, right? So you have this name, which is the key, and then you have a value, just like a hash. There's all these key value pairs inside of a hash, right? So here we have this, session and you have this like app session here can anyone like decipher what this is or like is this human readable at this point no but there's data inside here that the server will then like receive and kind of break down interpret and digest the idea here is that the set these cookies are passed from request to request so the first time i make a request to a server let's say i've never been on this website before i'm going to delete these cookies and I want to go to localhost 3000 slash nachos and check out all these cool nachos. If I were to visit for the first time, what it will do is it will create a cookie and send it to me. Cool. And so the next time I go and I click, say, trash can nachos or deep fried pizza nachos, along with that get request to nachos 3, I will also be passing along some data besides just the request for information. I'm also going to be passing back the cookie that I have. And so when the server gets it, they see, cool, homeboy wants get to slash nachos slash three. And also I'm going to look through the cookies to see if there's any other information in there that might be useful. And then looks like there's nothing in there. Cool beans. And then I send back the response of uh, with the show.html, the show.erb. And that's basically like how that whole thing goes. So your cookie will just kind of like keep track of everything. You can see like, so it gets like really sketch and dangerous. Um, like how many times the user clicked on a page, what links, how long they've been there, and like, yeah. I know, big sister, right? Tough. No? Oh, it's 2019, I figured I'd just change whatever I want. Yeah. Uh, so if I go to websites that use cookies, yeah. and I leave the website, I come back, does it remember me? Yeah, absolutely. And so check it out. So the question is like, if I go to a website and then I like leave and I come back, 
That session is stored locally. That's why you can clear your cookies because it's stored inside the browser. So notice how the cookies here are localhost 3000. If I go to my good friend, or google.com, I feel like a grandpa when I do this because like Google's my homepage and I have to go to google.com. It's all right. Either way, let me open this, boop, 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 go right back to my application, check out my cookies, and look what I have here. I have different cookies. Each one of these websites, right, like New York Times, CNN, uh, other news websites, I guess you guys can just judge me, I don't know. The, either way, every single domain will keep track of their own cookies. And so google.com can only read any like cookie that goes to like different parts of google.com. If I go to ESPN, anywhere I go on ESPN can only read cookies from ESPN. If I go on localhost 3000, it can only read cookies from localhost 3000. I always, I always get this question. Um, let's 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 go on. Let's go on this. Let's. I'm only gonna touch base on this like super fast. Um, it's okay. It, it always happens. Um, and so this was happening, right? There is like one like sort of Big Brother Big Sister website, like a couple of them, where they were like host all these advertisements. And like I said, each domain can keep track of these cookies. So if I'm like advertiser.com. And then I have like an embedded part on your website that's advertiser.com and I show you, that's weird, I'm not even buying insurance. Um, these cookies are trash. This is like, unless you it pits you up the website but you don't have access to that, you just put an image on another website that you loaded. It's not, it's not necessarily an image. This should be like an embed where you can like load another website on your. Yeah, but I'm saying like the image gets loaded like 50 times on from, and you can see that on another website because on the main website and that is a way I'm not trying to confuse everyone else um, so I'll like I'll follow up with like your rabbit hole deep dive in a second but basically I have like advertiser.com like showing this advertisement and then when I go to like a different website like New York Times like Yahoo AOL.com advertiser.com will embed in their website as well so because advertiser.com is the main domain I can read the cookies from Advertiser and see that you're on New York Times, AOL, Net Zero, Netscape, like all these like very popular modern day websites. And then I can like pull data from them. And so it's like one sort of like larger conglomerate. Does that, that make sense at all? Yeah. Not, okay. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's not important right now. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you later. So if there's like a website like CNN, has an advertiser on it. CNN has their cookies. The advertiser is getting their cookies, and then the advertisement is like service is like Google Ads. Kind of, yeah. Gets all those cookies, and they're like collecting everything that everybody else on. They're not getting all those cookies. They're like tracking their own individual information about you. Okay. Correct. So it's between first and third party. Yes, with GDPR and all that. Yeah, correct. So if you really want to like learn more about this, I highly encourage you. Here's some buzzwords for you. Um, first party and third party cookies. Uh, GDPR. All right. And uh, just how do advertisements know what I want? I'd be like really good. And then you can just write a blog post on it. If you want, I'd be happy to help you, but I don't want to like take away from this lecture. Is that fair? GDPR. Do you remember like a while ago where for whatever reason, every website you visited since you were 10 just emailed you like, hey, we've updated our privacy policy. And you're like, you have to accept it? That's what that was. Cool. All right, cool, let's go back to, let's go back to this. Um, very curious class. Um, all right, yeah, basically I was just trying to get to the point that cookies are domain specific. And so that's how we'll use to track you. So boop, boop, boop. Here on CNN, I'm only tracking CNN. And then all of these, so to websites, all right? Cool, so this might be one of them that you may or may not know about. Cool. So for example, right, like my mom's, uh, his mother's ate pretty recently and I wanted to buy my mom like a, a bidet. And so you, you buy one of those things, you know, buy like 10 of them, but advertisers don't know that. So now I'm just being randomly bombarded with like toilet seat advertisements. It's like, cool. You want to buy another one? I'm like, ah, believe it or not, I'm a collector. That's wild. All right, so check it out. Um, 
We're just going to keep track of these cookies and kind of use them. So what are sessions then? So what Rails will do, and some other kind of frameworks, what they'll do is they will build a session for you. And it's just a key value pair. And they will put it inside of the cookie. So for example, here we have sesh session, very aptly named. And this is what Rails will build for you. Rails will build this session, and then they will store some data inside this like hashified string. Like it's unreadable, and then they put it inside the cookie. So the cookie itself is a bunch of these key value pairs, and Rails will build a session that's a key value and put it inside the cookie. So when the cookie gets sent back and forth to your Rails server and to the browser, to the client, it's keeping track of you. Cool. And this is how you can kind of store some information inside the session so that when you make your next request, you can pull information from that session. That's basically what it is. Cool. What feels good about sessions and cookies? Or like a little bit better. Just mo better. Anyone want to like try explaining what a session is? It tracks your login information. Yeah, there's a lot of information that you can track. Um, certainly one of them could be like the fact that you're logged in. Cool. Um, but yeah, so login is like really, really popular in terms of one application for session. But we're not going to do that today. I'm going to take you to Flavortown. Let's build this app. All right, let's actually get to some features and write some code. So the idea here is that I want to be able to build this shopping cart. What I want to do is I want to go see my trash can nachos, but like dang, I'm hungry, I want some of those dank nachos. I want to hit add to cart, and essentially what I want to do is add it right here. Except I get this weird error that says, huh, no raw matches, post slash nachos. Why do you think that might be? Wow, Rails plus plus. Yeah, there's no route there, right? And so, um, right now, who feels comfortable? Like, I know how to do this. I know how to build this shopping cart feature. Cool. But no, that's okay, right? The idea here is that this is how the rest of your life as a dev will be. And that is, I understand Rails. I got some sort of ticket. My boss, my senior dev asked me to build this feature. I think I know how to do 60% of it. If you have a really good process, and this is something I'm really going to focus on as we get into Mod 3, is step by step, I know how to do a good amount of it. There are definitely some parts that I don't know how to do, and I can Google each one of those individual parts along the way as long as I know what I'm trying to do. Right? So what I'm trying to do, and let's explain this and spell it out, and that is I want to click this button. When I click this button, I want to somehow keep track of information about this somewhere. And then in that somewhere, maybe like an array or something, I want to be able to put it in this sort of cart, in this uh, H1 tag or whatever it is. And that's just the whole idea. So let's actually try building this out, right? The first thing is when I click add to cart, we already know there's a route error. Where would you want to send this route? Where would you want this add cart to go? Well, let's think, let's think how the routes work, right? Let's think how the routes work. The first thing we need to determine is what should the URL be, right? When I click this button and I'm adding something to my cart, do you think it's going to be a get, post, put, patch, or delete? All right, well, let's, let's think this through for a second, right? We can determine it's not a get because I definitely need to be sending some sort of information to the server. Boom. It's definitely not a delete. That's crazy. And we're left with either, for all intents and purposes, either post or patch, right? Post typically is used for some sort of like creation, right? That's the idea, right? Like I'm going to post some data to the server and it may or may not create something in my database. If you're posting and you're creating something, and here what I'm trying to do is add something to my cart, would that be creating, would I be creating a brand new cart every single time, or would I be like editing the contents of my cart, even if the, the cart could basically be empty at first? 
So which one would you like to go with? Smork? If you went with Pulse, it kind of like doesn't really matter, but Patch is just better fitted for what we're trying to do. Cool. Patch, right? And I've left some template up here so you can kind of reference it. The next part of this is going to be what? Right, what the URL should be, right? So I want to make a patch. If I make a patch to slash nachos, right, what kind of controller would I be implying that I'm going to hit? The nachos controller, right? But do I want to hit the nachos controller if I'm building a shopping cart? In theory, right, let's just say I'm very hungry. I mean, we're going to like get to lunch pretty soon and I eat all the time. Let's say I had like, I also sold hamburgers and I sold uh, salads for everyone, else, like falafels or whatever. Um, do I want to exclusively keep the information about my cart inside the nacho controller? No. So I should go somewhere else, right? Um, for me, I'm thinking if I'm going to go to my shopping cart, I'm going to make an update to my cart and I'm going to make an edit to my cart. And make a patch request to my cart, I'm probably going to want to put that to, yes, I put it to like patch to slash cart. All right, this is when you start breaking RESTful routing. I know RESTful routing is really cool. Again, it's a convention and it allows you to build really fast, but at some point you'll have to break out of it because there's other things you'll want to do. Cool, I'm going to make a patch to slash cart. So do I want to go to the nachos controller? No. I'd want to go to what sort of controller? Yeah, I'd make some sort of like cart controller, you know? And then you could easily do that by what command would make a brand new controller? Rails G controller, right? And so cool, let's do that. Um, I have a cart. What method would you want in here as considering what we're trying to do? Wow, powerful. So did, do we kind of talk about anything that you could not really like think through on your own? Not really, right? So, so far, no new features, right? Nothing crazy. Um, I can have a helper if I wanted to, but I'm, I'm lazy for right now. I just want to make it work. The idea is that I need to hit MVC for every single one of these features that I'm going to build. So I'm going to Rails G controller cart, and here I am, rocky like a hurricane. Wow. Oops. Cool. So I'm, I'm at this like update action, right? The first thing I want to do is I need to actually test to see whether or not I can hit it. So I'm going to put a buy bug. You want to have this very strong iterative process of writing something and testing. Writing something and testing. So my thought process is I need to be able to make a patch to slash cart hitting the cart controller with the update action. No big deal. Now let me check my views. Oop. Hit that show page real quick. Am I currently going to a patch to slash carts. No, how can I make this go to patch slash carts? You guys are talking about helpers that do not exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's just hard code these things, right? And so the idea is that you just want to make it work you want to hard code, you want to test everything, and then you can pull it back and make it more dynamic. So we're going to go to slash cart, and this is a link, like a dirtbag that I am. How can we make it actually do the patch? Okay, a little method action. Patch. I think that works. Let's find out. Boop. If... Oh, you're right. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. That'll work. Let's just go back to index. Smort. Smort. All right, cool. Uh, cart. And then I want to force this bad Johnson to be a patch. Smort. Good call. Good shout. If I click this, the idea is that I should be able to hit this patch request. <laughs> Mega bless. Cool. So I clicked it, and all of a sudden, it's like loading forever. Odds are I'm probably inside the buy bug. Cool? Great. So what's the first thing I actually want to check once I'm in here? What do you always want to know? 
the params, right? So what are my params? Just for the shy folks that didn't want to say, blow that up. What are my params? What do I have in here? Do I have anything useful in here? Not really. I have nothing actually useful in here, right? I'm in the controller cart, action update, method patch. One, it's good that I know that, in fact, my route works. I've tested it. I can hit it. But the idea is that I need some additional information in here. What information would you want? Right, the idea is that I need this information. Trash can nachos, all right, maybe just the nacho ID in there. I need the details of the nacho that I clicked on. That's what I really need. So I need to somehow pass details all right, in this request. And I need to pass them as params. So, so far so good, nothing wild, right? All right, let's think through. In my code, I have a button two, and I want my button two, when I click it, to pass params. Well, I don't know how to do that, so I'm going to put button two pass params. All right, this is the first time I've run into a, a, a part of the feature I'm trying to build that I don't know how to build. Hmm. Is there a way to pass params when clicking a submit button? I hope so. Wow, look at this, look at that. Okay, that's not great. I don't actually, I don't, I don't actually want that. Come on, dog. Hook me up. This one stinks. Let's see. Passing params. All right, so the question is, passing params using button two or button tag. Cool. Uh, let me just troll through these. Oh, man. Damn, they have callbacks in there? All right, great. Got it. So basically, inside my button tag, my button two, whatever it may be, there's a key that I can call as params. And then I can have that key go to another hash where I can try passing in information. So let's try it. Boop, boop, boop. I'm just going to do this. Uh, oh, yeah. And I'm just going to go, great. Let's throw in some params. And we know that it's a hash. So I have key values in here. What information did you say we, we needed or wanted? The nacho ID? Sure. I'm going to put nacho ID as the key. All right. And do I have access to the nacho ID right now, currently? Great. And what would that be? Powerful. Great. So let me just continue this buy bug and be a clown. Oop. Let's go back to Flavortown. All right. Oh, didn't like that. Ooh. All right, totally check it out. Ready? Wrong number of arguments given for expected 0 to 3, right? So what is this telling you? I have 1, 2, 3. Ah, 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 ah. It's my good friend, the count. It's no big deal. Um, but I gave it 4, so it doesn't like that. So it looks like inside this one thing, I need to probably move this bloop, here. So I have a key value, comma. I have another key that points to a value that's another hash that has a nested key value. Let's test. Which one? Oh, embarrassing. Thank you. That would have been a bad day. All right, cool. So it loaded, right? I read through the error. I had some sort of guess as to what it wanted, and I just kind of like figured it out. Well, it wasn't like magic. If I hit Add to Cart, the idea is that I should hit the Buy bug, all right, bloop. I'll test. What are my params? Hmm. If only the params came through. Oh my goodness. There they are. Noise. Noise. All right. So now I know inside my cart controller that I have the params. Cool. I have a params at a key of nacho ID, which is now the nacho ID of what I just clicked on. Cool. What can we do with this information? Yeah, we could retrieve the nacho. We have this nacho object. Sure. Once I have the nacho object, what do, what do I need to do? Huh? 
shovel it into some sort of cart, right? So, so the idea here is that I need to like push this into some sort of like cart. But what is cart right now? Cart is nil. Cart it doesn't even exist. I've never defined it. So I need to do something like cart is an array, something like that. So then I can successfully push into it. Does that make sense? All right, let's keep that in mind. No? Yeah? Yeah? Or? Huh? Do you have a model for cart? I don't have a model for cart, and I'll explain why here in like two seconds. Also, wouldn't like a lot of things like cart could be sent to different variables? Correct. So there's, there's like flaws to this, right? There's like definitely flaws to this. I'm just trying to tell you a story about how to like solve the problem. And so like we're like walking through it. Um, and I think that what is happening is very often what winds up happening. And that is you can think through all the problems and then there's this paralysis by analysis. You don't actually wind up doing anything and then you feel defeated like I can't actually build this feature. So go with what you know, right? Start making some educated guesses, Google things, and keep testing things through. So I'm just kind of like talking through out loud like what the thought process here is. Um, fully knowing right now, like I know it's gonna break, and I know there's problems with it, but the idea here is just like what this story is in terms of building new features. So what do we know about um, the way to persist data from one request to another? Possibly how you've handled errors. Right, there's this flash hash. So if I go flash, which is available to me globally, I see, wow, action dispatch, there's flash, and it's just a regular hash. I can add key values in there. I can even let the user know flash, if I put flash, add a key of like message, and just be like, yo, dog, you like added this nacho to the cart, something like that. Cool. There's something else I want to introduce you to. You may or may not have like seen it, but there is another hash that's available that we've talked about, and it's called the session. The session, however, is it's not as friendly or as small as the flash. Because remember, every request, what happens to the flash? Right? It kind of like wipes. It only persists for that one extra request. Whereas the session keeps data from request to request. And so naturally, which one would be bigger, the flash or the session? All right, well, understatement of the year. Oh, uh, yeah. Just a little bit bigger, not too much. A lot of useful data in there. My name too many times. Um, boom. So Rails will build this like session hash for you. And there's a lot of data in there, but it's just a normal hash-like object. I can just do session, and I can do session at a key of like, I don't know, what, what would you want to name this key to hold all of your nachos or hamburgers or hot dogs? Huh? Cart. So I can do something like session at a key of cart is equal to empty array. And that way, I have this array that persists everywhere. Then I can just push into it. So before I get further into that, that is correct. So if I were to do something like session at a key of cart, yeah, let's just do that. And I pass in this nacho ID, right? So who's following me along? The jump from lines four to five, to the jump to line six. Right, yeah, I'm gonna comment this out, but like I could tell that the black along with the sun like hiding back and forth between the clouds is a little weird on the glare, so I'm just gonna leave it up so you can see it. Um, but cool, like who's following along lines four to five, making that jump to line six? Like where that came from? Yeah, question? Yeah, you had mentioned uh, Somewhere. Yeah, I haven't done that yet, so oh. I'm about to do that. Session at a key of cart is equal to an empty array. Cool. Uh, and then I do, and I push it. Right. Push it. Cool. So so far so good, right? But then we get this problem where every time I hit update, what happens to cart? Womp womp goes back to like empty. So the thing is, I need to kind of like store it somehow. So I can kind of do that here, um, but because I'm in lecture mode and I'm gonna like take you to the next level, right? I can do that right here, right? I can like basically save this somehow and then we can keep moving. But the idea here is that the cart, when I push something in, this cart, 
I know it's weird, we're in the cart controller, but what I'd like to do is have this cart available to me globally. Any controller should be able to hit this cart, correct? So what, where can I put this where all the controllers can know about it? The power of inheritance, right? So let me start like pulling this logic into the application controller. So let's do that. Bloop, bloop, bloop. So that lazy search, you like that? All right, this is what we're gonna do. Bloop, bloop. Cool. So the first thing is I need some sort of method, right, to be my cart. Cool? What would you wanna call this method for your cart? Let's be real creative here. Plus plus. Cool. And like we talked about, this is just basically gonna say session at a key of cart is equal to an empty array. And what we wanna do is we wanna avoid this problem of always resetting the session a key of cart to empty array. So what we can do, um, what would you say the logic is of what we're trying to do? Like, I don't wanna reset the cart to empty array every single time. How would you sort of explain that in English? Yeah, right, like check to see if, right, session at a key of cart exists, exists, something like that, right? So the idea here is like, if session at a key of cart exists, then what do you want to return? I just want to give back the session, the key of cart. Else, if it doesn't exist, make it, right? We also know that what is nil in terms of its truthiness? False. So if it doesn't exist, then make it. Otherwise, I'm sorry, if it exists, return it. Otherwise, make an empty array. So this is a powerful refactor, right? Session and a key of cart. So this right here can be refactored. You all like being with that? You like that? So this is what this is saying, right? Session and a key of cart or equals to empty array. The concept of this or equals is known as memoization. Memoization is really good. It makes your code a lot faster. We won't kind of get into it today, but this is what it looks like. And that is simply, hey, Session a key of cart, right? Do you exist? If you do, cool. Or I'm going to assign you to be an array. So this whole thing is one line. Any questions on this? I'm going to push the code. Huh? Memoization. Yep. The or equal operator. Um, at least that's what I think it is. Um, I, that's what I've been calling it. Just call it or equal because if anyone else is confused, or equal, and then they'll then they'll know what you're talking about. People people love debating about everything, you know. Um, so I usually start off all my conversations like, "Oh, what's up? Do you do you like bread? It's pretty pretty safe." Test of waters, you know? Yeah. It's like my powerful pickup line. Yo, do you like water? Yeah, you already <laughs> like 80% of me. You know? Huh? You don't like water? Well, then you don't like 80% of me, so it's all right. Um, you only need 20%, right, the lecture stuff. So the idea here is now I have this cart, and it's persisting because it's in my session. Session will go from request to request. Um, and it's more powerful than Flash, because Flash just goes for how many extra requests? One, right? So now I need to actually hold all of my nachos. So what do you want to call this method? The idea is that my cart exists, but I need to be able to have a method that adds the nacho to the cart. So what do you want to call this method that adds a nacho to the cart? 
Macho, hey, hey, should have left that. Add nacho to cart, cool? And what it's trying to do is it's doing this session at a key of cart and it's shoveling in like uh, the nacho ID that we gave it. But the problem is we don't have nacho ID, so we have to tell it what the nacho ID is. So whenever I actually invoke this method, I'm gonna give it a nacho ID so that it could take the nacho ID and push it into the cart. Nothing crazy, right? So, kind of along the lines of MVC, why would you do this in the nacho controller? That's a good question. Um, I, I like made this too specific. It should be like item. And then it would be like item ID. But like right now, we only have nachos, so I've just been calling it nacho. But does that answer your question, actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm going to leave it as nacho because I'm, I'm lazy. Is that all right? Why is this not in the cart controller? Oh, you're right. All right, cool. All right, you, you guys like that command D? Check it out. Ready? Bloop, bloop. Powerful. Cool. So now. Why wouldn't this be in the cart controller? Very good. And I'll show you right now why. So the question is, why wouldn't the cart controller have the cart and this add item to cart inside of it. The idea is this cart controller is simply going to update the cart as a method. The weird thing is inside my nacho controller, right, I actually have um, the index and then I hit this button inside the index that's going to add the nacho to the controller. Um, where's cart? I hit this update action, and inside this update action, I want to make sure I have access to the cart globally. Like it doesn't matter what controller it is, I should have access to it. So inside this update, I'm passing in the params with the button, whatever the button is. It doesn't matter what it is. I could be adding shoes, right? I could be adding, I don't know why I'm like really into shoes, um, laces, uh, I don't know. T-shirts, hats, you know, mustache paste. I don't know. I, I can't grow facial hair, so I don't know if that exists. Cool? It doesn't matter what it is. And so here, I would be invoking, because application control, right? I'm inheriting from it. Here, I would just be, boop, add item to cart. Does add item to cart exist here? Does the nacho ID exist here? Cool. So I'm going to invoke this method on the application controller. Doesn't matter what the ID is. Cool. And so here I'm just adding the item to the cart. Because all the cart does, it just updates. Where the cart lives, though, I mean, you can you can actually leave it in cart, but for me, logically, if everyone needs access to it, I'm going to leave it in the application. Because at some point, right? I'm going to get to your question, and I'm going to get to your question. At some point you will want to see what's in your cart, right? At some point, you will invoke this method somewhere. You will invoke this somewhere, right? Does it, what controller gives access to everyone else, right? Like if I had like a, a sneaker controller and I was like, cool, what's in my cart? And I just called the cart method. If I left the cart inside the cart controller, Will the sneaker controller have access to it? No. And so that's the idea. Yeah. So what's the point of the cart controller? The cart controller simply updates the cart. That's all it does. You can, in fact, put the update method inside the application controller. You can do that, right? And some of you are wondering, oh my god, we should totally do that. Now let's think through what happens, right? Any controller that inherits from application controller will have a update method. Right. Because every single controller should be able to invoke add item to cart and see their cart. Of items. Like, if you 
where like you have not the right to speak, right? You just have like a sense of an array of all these different ideas. Does that give you like access to the actual ideas? Yes, and I and I will get to that in the next step. You guys are like already seeing what the next steps are, which is really good, and I'll, I'll get to that. So you might have something to do with what she's saying, but like for storing the items in your cart, would it be better, like if that was a real use case, would it be used in a hash instead of an array, so that you could have like the entire item yeah. in there? And, like, all yeah, stuff? I'm just using an array right now because it's just, it's so much easier to explain the concept. Right. Um, if you just want a bunch of things in there, I'd put an array, but if, let's just say you wanted to buy two sneakers, I mean, yeah, you can add it twice, and then you can just count how many times it comes up in the array, and that's kind of slow. But if you had a hash, you can put sneaker quantity one, and then sneaker quantity two, sneaker quantity three. So yeah, you would use like a hash if you wanted to. But here I'm just trying to explain the concept. If you wanted to replace this in your code when you build it out with this, that's going to take you no time at all. Is that fair? Yeah. All right, cool. So. The idea here is like session at a key of cart, I'm pushing the item ID. Um, but really, it's not actually session at a key of cart. What is the cart now? Cart. Just cart. So I'm going to invoke the cart method, and I'm going to push the item into the cart. So if you write really clean code, it's so easy to read. I'm going to invoke a method called add item to cart. It's going to take that item's ID. And it's going to push the item ID into the cart. Like, you can just read it straight. And so that's kind of like one of the bigger things in terms of like leveling up. If you like name your things properly, your code becomes very readable. Um, maybe this is kind of going back to the question. That's like an array of numbers. Yes. Correct, yeah. I promise I'm going to get there. <laughs> All right. So the question is like, hey, that's an array of numbers. That doesn't do me any good. Now, I need to be able to actually see the items inside this cart. And so here, we can make another method, right? And we need a method that basically takes all of these cart items and turns them into objects, like Ruby objects that we, we know and love. So, I don't know, you can call this like see the items, whatever you want to actually call this. Cool? So that's the problem we're trying to solve now. And so let's take a look at this real quick. If I were to do nacho.find, is this hurting you? Nacho.find. And I were to put in ID1, what would I get back? Nacho1. If I put an array of 1 and 2, what will I get back? What would you want to get back? Right? So because you asked like a million questions, I didn't like go through this step, but I would just Google it. Like, hey, how can I query active record, query rails with an array? And then I promise you, it'll be like find accepts an array. You're like, cool. I just kind of like moved you to that step a little faster. But, but that's exactly your question, right? Like, cool, like I need these objects back, but I have just an array of IDs. <clears throat> You have a find by method, yeah. You have a find by method that exists. So as you get more and more complicated, you have to like scale up the application. You can. You can. You can. Huh? Um, this is what I will tell you. If you add a bunch of objects, objects take a ton of data. The cookie can only hold a certain amount of data, so it is better to pass in just a string of a bunch of IDs, because then you can throw in as like, I mean, literally hundreds, versus if you start storing full objects in there, cookies also can only take string values. So like as Ruby builds the session hash, if it's converting all of these like objects into this string, you lose space very quickly. And the, the cookie size really isn't that big. So it's better to just put a bunch of IDs, oh. and that's why. 
Good question. That's a Googleable question. I think it's like 64 kilobytes or something. It's tiny. Two DMA? You can. It depends on what type. Really depends on like what you want to get out of it. Um, it's hard to say. Typically, a hash would be like pretty good. But yeah, this would this would be questions that like you're like discovering and figuring out as you're building the app if you want to fully build out this feature. But this is just sort of like the concept in terms of like how do I use the session? How do I, where do I put the cart? Why should I put the cart there? And this is just kind of like the thought process. A lot of the things that I'm telling you, you will actually run into the bugs. And then you'll realize like, oh man, I should have moved it here or I can move it here. So like some of you are like, without somebody on the stage like kind of telling you, if you were to put the update in the application and then you were to run your first patch in the hamburger controller hitting the update method, and then sometimes it's weird. You're like, huh, why is it trying to add it to the cart? You're like, oh my god, it's running the update method from application controller because it's inheriting it. And you're like, oh man, I should pull that out somewhere else. Where should I put this update my cart? I'm going to need to pull it out of application controller. Where do I want to put it? Well, I can just make its own controller and then I'll throw it in there. And that's kind of like, eventually a lot of people like made that same sort of like thought philosophy because it makes sense. And then they ran into bugs and was like, oh man, actually we should move it here. And then like best practices started forming. And so this I'm kind of like just explaining like the story behind it. So that you will all feel empowered to be like, you know what? I know how Rails works. I know its routes. I know its controller actions. I'm just going to make it work. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to hit a controller action. Then I'm going to add my logic. Right? It'll work. And then as you scale, you might run into a bug. And you're like, ooh, how can I pull this out? How can I move this around? And then eventually you will like wind up figuring it out. But the idea is that you should feel like I can do this because you just understand the MVC architecture of Rails. So you're saying you can just build the controller, create a controller for everything, but it's building the model for it? Correct. So the idea, um, the question I was going to get to, but I can talk about it now, is why didn't I just make a cart model? Right? You can. And some applications do that because you'll want to save it in the database, and that is okay, but some websites, you only, like, how do you keep track of something like that if nobody logs in? You ever go to a website, you're like, oh, I'm gonna like, keep track of my cart, and then you clear all your cookies and your cart's gone, but if you want your cart to be saved, saved forever when you log in, then you can build the cart model and then you can have the user be associated with the cart and then like pull it all in that way. Um, but for right now, I don't have a user. I haven't gotten to auth yet. Um, but this is a way that you can like basically create a shopping cart or persist data from request to request without logging in and without this like user model. Is that fair? It can. And then I guess my question is, if you're not logged in, how do you persist the cart from like sessions, like from you know day one, and I come back to the site five days later, and my cart's still there? Mm -hmm. Is that in like session storage, or is that is it? That's in session storage, storage exactly. Or is it it's still in session? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So until you clear your cookies, that session will still be there. Like if I, if you were to go to like Gmail, right? It's like keeping track of like your username and you have this token that says like you've logged in. And then that expires after like I think three or four days. But if you open Gmail every day, guess what you made a request to? You made a request to Gmail and you passed in your cookie unknowingly. And then Gmail will be like, oh cool, this session's only like a day old. This is probably the same person coming from the same IP address. It will renew the session and then send you back your Gmail. And that way it's renewed. But you ever like go on a trip and then you haven't logged in Gmail for a while and all of a sudden you're like logged out? It's because the session expired. Like when you sent the cookie with the session, it was like, cool, it came from the same IP address. Uh, okay, so the person's probably trusted, but the last time they logged in was like a week ago. So it'll automatically be like, well, it's expired. Log you out 
and when it sends you back the request, it says, hey, please log in. Sorry, well, in session, so I can find my website, like, By the developer. Yeah, so you, we will get into JavaScript where you can literally write functions to set storage, like either local or session, or you can write to the cookie directly. Yeah. So many questions. So you'd be saving that password and using the session and not the cookie? Not the username and password. Not specifically. When you log in, all right, your server will say, cool, I will receive your username and login. We'll get more into this in auth. It'll be like, cool, I got your username and login, right? You have been authenticated. Awesome. And then I will send you back a token that says, this person is who they say they are. And then there's just like this token that now says that you've authenticated. I never ever want to pass back and forth your username and password. Because believe it or not, there are bad people out there. I mean, they, they probably don't exist. They're a myth. But they're called hackers. They're like, yeah. You don't want to like do that. You want to expose the username and password. The session, the cookie doesn't really do anything, right? It's just a key value store. All the data that's inside, as you hit the server, the server will read the data, and then it will do something. And that is based on what the developer is writing. For example, um, here in this particular app, which I will promise you I will finish at some point, <laughs> is I hit the button, right? And the user sends over the request to the server, and it hits the routes. The routes tell it to go to a patch, I'll just follow along here. The route says hit patch cart. Got you, fam. And so it goes to the cart controller, hits this update, and then it does this logic. Right? Inside this logic, it goes inside the application controller. Inside here, it sees the this, it sees this, it sees this, and then it reads from the session that was stored inside the cookie. So the server's doing something with the data that's stored inside the session, which is actually inside the cookie, which is just passed back and forth. Cookie's a document, just has a bunch of key value pairs. Does that, does that clarify some things? Or if not, I'm sorry. Um, I thought that was all right. Yeah, good. Noise. OK, let's continue. So I basically want to see the items, right? And the idea here is I can do nacho.find. Here it's just going to be nacho. Right, just because we're just dealing with nachos right now. Um, and now I need to give it the array of IDs. Well, where is my array of IDs? Cool. And so if I want to see something inside the view, can I just do um, items like this? Do I have access to items now inside my views or no? Right, so now I have something called like items. That's all. And so now I have C items available to me globally because of the application controller in all of my controllers. So naturally, inside of my Nacho controller, do I have access to C items? I have something called C items. So I can just do cool inside my index. I'm just going to invoke a method called C items, C the items. See the items gives me access to what instance variable? At items, right? So inside my index, I have an unordered list. I'm going to make at items dot each because it's an array. Do, blue, blue. And these are going to be item. Oh man, just kidding. That looked like a Ruby. Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. A little end action. Well, this, well, that. I take the item, and I don't even remember what what I call them. Oh no, they're called name. Cool. Wow, how descriptive. So item dot name, and because these are OLs, I'm going to wrap this whole thing inside a li tag, and that's it. 
That's all I'm going to do. Oh, yeah, you're right. I do. Man, it goes away so fast. Yeah. We'll, we'll get there. Get there. Man, it's so hard to switch between Ruby and JavaScript. All right, cool. Any questions on like just kind of like how I got to at items, where it's coming from, why I have access to it in the index? Can I ask a question? If it doesn't pertain to this, because we are losing the flow of the lecture. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Oops. I'd be happy to answer it like offline, unless it's for the general good of the group. Cool. Let's um. I have a buy bug somewhere. If you don't know where something is, but you know you have it somewhere, if you hit Command Shift F, it'll actually search the whole project, as opposed to just Command F, which searches that file that you're in. So I have a buy bug somewhere, and it is right there. Powerful. Cool. So I just want to get rid of this so like it doesn't mess up like what's going on. So the idea here is that if I hit Add to Cart. Nothing happens. Why? I hit add to cart, it added to the cart, but I never actually send it a response. So where should I send the response to? What should I see? Can I render index inside my cart controller? No, I should send it somewhere else. And I should direct it somewhere else. I'm going to redirect it to the nachos path. Cool. So I see trash can nachos. If I add to cart, I will see deep fried nachos. Chicken pot pie. What a disgusting individual. Anyways, any questions on like how we're able to see? If I refresh, it's still there. It's persisting. Um, well, you tell me. What would happen? Because dot find, right, when I pass in the ID of one and one, it'll just give me ID one back. So it doesn't actually do that. But this is where maybe like the object will come back or a two-dimensional array. Like you want to add more features to this, but now you know how and where you're going to go with it. The idea is I'm just trying to teach you the concept behind this session, how it's working, how you can use it to persist data. Cool? All right. So. The last thing I want to talk about is if I were to do an incognito mode and open localhost 3000, yay, I'm on Rails. If I were to see nachos, this car is empty and this car is empty. It's because each individual browsing session will keep track of its own sessions. And so when they say incognito mode doesn't keep track of you, that's fine because I can just go bloop, localhost 3000 and be a new one. I can do Add trash can nachos. nachos. Right. These two are the same, but this browser and this browser is incognito. They're different. So if I added like dessert nachos, it'll add it here. And if I wanted danger dogs, I can add it here. So they're on different sessions. Cool. Are there any questions on how we were to implement this feature? Because once that's done, I'm gonna kill the recording. Then I'll be I'll be having to answer all the other questions. All right, cool. That's all I have.